Welcome, AP Calculus AB students. Mr. Record here. We're actually with my fifth period class today. They can give a shout out real quick. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah, they are, they're excited, as you can tell. We're going to take a look at our example three here from topic 6.4. We're still dealing with this idea of the accumulator function, thinking about a definite integral that will accumulate things. And I have a news flash. That's this little picture, right? Do -do 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 -do. News flash. We're actually going to be able to use accumulators to find absolute extrema. Now, you might be asking, uh, what's absolute extrema? What's that all about? Well, if you remember back to unit five, which is what we did before our winter break, this uses the idea of what's referred to as the candidates test. So that's going to come back into play. So we're starting to stack some information together. Basically, we're making a really nice calculus sandwich, right? A little bit of unit five, a little bit of unit six. We put some mustard and mayo. We've got lunch. So let's take a look at our example three that uses the idea of the candidates test. So the problem starts with um, uh, us saying, let f be a function defined on the closed interval negative six to six. And we know that f of zero is three. But what's given to us is the graph of f prime. That's the derivative of f, which consists, it says, of four line segments and one semicircle is shown to the right. Let's double check that. Let's count these line segments. I just make sure this isn't lying. One, two, three, and four. Okay, I'll buy it. Four line segments, and then up, I see the semicircle right there. So they're telling the truth. The directions are find the absolute maximum value of f of x over the closed interval. So if we can just review some of those ideas about how we found absolute extrema before, we just need to apply it in this new context. So the very first thing, whenever you find extrema, is you had to take the derivative. Well, guess what? The derivative is done for us because it is this graph. This is a graph of f prime, and I'm going to label it there. So the next thing that we had to remember is we find this derivative and we seek out its critical numbers. Do we remember critical numbers? Critical numbers are when the derivative is either equal to zero or possibly when the derivative is undefined. What's nice about this is that you don't have to do any algebra because f prime will equal zero whenever the graph crosses the x-axis. And it looks like we've got, would you say four places where f prime is zero? It would be at negative four, negative two, positive two, and five. f prime, is it undefined anywhere? Well, what I'm looking for is holes, breaks, asymptotes, things like that, and I don't see any of those. So this has no solution. Now, you want to be careful because sometimes students think whenever there's sharp turns, that's a situation where f prime is undefined, but that's not true. That would be where f double prime, I guess, would be undefined if we were taking yet another derivative, but that's not what we're doing here. So you're only looking for holes or asymptotes. If this graph is continuous, then f prime is always going to be defined. So now we have to remember, what is this thing called the candidates test that I mentioned early? Well, the candidates test says that you are just simply going to take all of your critical numbers and, do you remember what else? The endpoints. All of those would get corralled together. You can put them in any order. Obviously, I'm writing them in ascending order here. But we have to test each one of those. I missed one of them, didn't I? We have to test each one of those inside of our function. So that's where things are going to be a little new to this problem. So let's go ahead and get that ball rolling. Let's go ahead and set up our table of values. And I want to kind of warn you, it's likely that the right column is going to be a little longer. So that's why I'm writing it like this. X column is just going to consist of these values. 
I can start writing the first one here, negative 6. I'll, I'll put them in as they um, come into play. Okay. Now, the right-hand side is just simply f of x, right? Because we're trying to find the absolute maximum of f of x. Okay. So how do we get an f of x out of a graph of f prime? Well, similar to what we did in problem two, you're going to integrate your f prime, and that's going to give you an f. But we need boundaries when we do this integration. So seeing as how the problem at the very beginning gave us a value of f where x is 0, it seems that it's very likely that we're going to use that number 0 throughout this entire problem. Seeing as how we're trying to find out what is the f value when x is negative 6, that seems like that would be the other value that we would want. And so there you have it. You would put the smaller of the two down here in the bottom, and the larger one up here, I'm actually going to have to put it above the line there, and now I know that this is just f of 0 minus f of negative 6. And now you just do the work. Okay, well, what does the work look like? Well, I'm going to go ahead and isolate in on my f of negative 6. So I'll add it over to the left side. And now that will equal f of 0. And then I'm going to subtract over my integration from negative 6 up to 0. And you're going to do a lot of the same things that we were doing in a previous example that I talked about. And for whatever it's worth, I probably should have put a dx here. If you've already written the notes, I don't think that you have to go back and change that because that could be kind of a pain. But this dx needs to be there or else the problem doesn't make sense. Okay, f of 0 is 3 minus, and then what is the integration from negative 6 to 0? That's kind of tricky, isn't it? Because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on here, as you can tell. If I color in my shading, I've got a triangle down here below the x-axis. I got myself a triangle above the x-axis. And I think, don't I have a quarter circle below? And I'm pretty sure that this is the worst one that we have to compute by far. So if we continue that, we have a negative and then a 2 by 2 triangle. So the area of this triangle would be negative 2, right? 1 half times 4, but make it negative. The area of this triangle would be 1 half 2 times 1, which is positive 1. And the area of this quarter circle would be a negative 1 quarter pi times 2 squared, the radius 2 squared, which is 4. My 4s cancel, and I end up with negative pi. So when I add all this together, I should get negative 1 minus pi. Now, if I distribute the minus, hopefully you all are in agreement that I get positive pi plus 3. And that's one of six values that we have to find. But I promise that this is the worst one. So we're going to go on to our next value. All right. Oh, before we move on, my class pointed out I don't know how to add, apparently. <laughs> 3 minus negative 1, that should be 4. So pi plus 4 is where we are when x is negative 6. Now, I know that this is kind of painstaking, but I got a feeling that these are going to get a little bit easier. And I don't want us to necessarily erase any of this work because I have a feeling that we're going to be able to use some of this work that we've done to find negative 4. Because negative 4 is just going to ask us to compute the integral from negative 4 up to 0 of f prime with respect to x. And of course, by definition, that's f of 0 minus f of negative 4. 
Well, what this is going to then produce is if we get the f of negative 4 all by itself, is I'll have f of 0 minus the definite integral from negative 4 to 0. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, once again, f of 0 is 3 minus. And as I said before, I think we already got our work here for us. Now, we're just going to take positive 1 and then subtract pi to get these two areas added together. So I have positive 1 minus pi. And then once I distribute, I should have, and I'll do this one right, pi plus 2. So far, so good. Now, if we stopped right now, the maximum would probably be pi plus 4, right? That's our largest of these two numbers, but we don't want to stop yet because we have some more things to plug in. So now let's plug in negative 2. Now, if we plug in negative 2, we're going to be integrating from negative 2 to 0 of f prime of x dx. Again, that will be f of 0 minus f of negative 2. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and get the f of negative 2 all by itself by adding it over. That will leave f of 0 on the right side, and then I will subtract the integral from negative 2 to 0 as such. So what do we get here? Well, our f of 0 is 3. It's always going to be. And now, if you recall, we've already done this work from negative 2 to 0. We're just talking about the area of this pink region, which we've already said is negative pi. But you have a minus built in, and that's kind of tricky. 3 minus negative pi, and that, of course, would be pi plus 3, which isn't enough, is it, to dethrone what seems to be our max so far, which is pi plus 4. All right, we're hanging in there. Let's keep going. i got to extend my graph a little bit, or my t-chart. So now we're going to plug in positive 2. Now, at this point, I'm actually going to take a bit of a detour. And I think we're going to be able to do some of the work a little bit faster. Here's why. We know now that 2 is larger than our known 0 value. So that means 0 is now at the bottom. 2 is at the top. And we're going to still integrate f prime of x. By definition, this is f of 2 minus f of 0. If I were to get f of 2 by itself, then of course that means that I would add f of 0 over to the other side. And so now we really have this addition idea happening, the accumulation by addition. So what that means is my answer would be 3 plus, and then whatever the area is between 0 and 2, which we've been there, we've done that, right? We know that this answer is negative pi. And I'm not even going to worry about shading it in because we can see its relationship to this part. So the area between 0 and 2 is just negative pi. So I have 3 plus pi, or I might just call it 3 minus pi. And I think for the first time, I have a negative answer here. There's no way that's going to be my max. Now, when we plug in 5, integrate from 0 to 5, let's try to use a color I haven't used yet, integrate from 0 to 5, which is equal to f of 5 minus f of 0, I want to make sure that we all see that we're still going to have this same relationship that we had right here. f of 0 to start, which is 3, but now we're integrating from 0 to 5. We're accumulating all the way to this dot right here, which means in addition to this negative pi, I've got to add in some more area. And this area is a triangle that's a 3 by 2 
That's 6. Cut it in half. Positive 3. So I'm going to take the 3 that we started with, add negative pi, add 3, and now I have 6 minus pi. Now, that's all wonderful, but I still don't think we have dethroned pi plus 4. Pi plus 4 still seems to be our maximum. Boy, it'd be a shame if we found our max right at the beginning and wasted our time finding all these other values. But it's not a waste of time because you would have to demonstrate that that intrude indeed was the max. Finally, we're going to do our last number, which is uh, positive 6. I'm kind of running out of space here, but that's okay. We're, we aren't going to be needing a whole lot of room here because when we integrate from 0 to 6 of f prime, this is basically going to be f of 6 minus f of 0. And if you recall what we were talking about with our accumulation formula, we're going to start with 3. Right? That's us getting this f of 0 added to the other side. And then we're going to add what we accumulate area-wise between 0 and 6, which basically means we got to compute this little piece here, which is negative 1 half. You guys can probably just tell by looking at, hey, that's half of a box below the x-axis. So that's going to take negative pi plus 3 minus a half added to this. Now, unfortunately, this is kind of messy <laughs> because you've got 6 minus a half, which we're just going to call 5 and a half or 11 halves. 6 minus 1 half, 5 and 1 half. And then we'll subtract pi. But again, I don't think that this is larger than pi plus 4. No question, pi plus 4 is our abs max. And it actually occurred at an endpoint. That's not always going to be the case. And again, I don't want anybody to feel like, oh my gosh, we did all of this work. And the answer was right there in front of us at the beginning. Sometimes the answer might be in the middle. Sometimes it might be at the end. But this is how the new information that you've learned in Unit 6 can mesh tightly with what you see in Unit 5. And there is about a 75 to 80 percent chance that we will see a problem very similar to this on the AP exam. I hope this helps. We'll see you next time.